Hello, welcome to The Voracious Reader. Today, I want to talk with you about Peace Pilgrim. Have you ever heard of her? Well, she passed away in 1981 after walking more than 25,000 miles for peace. She was a true Peace Pilgrim. In fact, she prefers that we don't even use her real name because her focus of her message was so much on peace. You can certainly discover her real name by looking her up, but today I want to share with you a book about her called Peace Pilgrim, her life and work in her own words. So she was able to write down much of this um, before she died, and she could keep a pen and paper in her tunic and would jot things down, and she did a lot of public speaking at various uh, colleges and other places that would invite her to come and talk about her message of peace. But her book really goes into detail about how she got there and the spiritual growing up, as she calls it, that she had to do. You know, she grew up in a comfortable, financially comfortable lifestyle and at a young age came to find that money was easy to make and spending her life spending money wasn't very meaningful and she wanted to know what is the meaning of life. And in seeking that meaning, I would like to read this quote directly from her. It was out of a deep seeking for a meaningful way of life, and after having walked all one night through the woods, that I came to know that I, what I now know to be a very important psychological hump. I felt a complete willingness, without any reservations, to give my life, to dedicate my life to service. I tell you, it's a point of no return. After that, you can never go back to a completely self-centered living. So that, she said, ended the first phase of her life, and she entered that second phase of spiritually growing up, where she had to learn a lot about how, um, how her inner world worked and what brought her happiness and peace. And so in that second phase of life, she says she became acquainted with what the psychologists call ego and consciousness. And this was, you know, in the, um, I think she began her work, her healing work in 1950s, late 50s. Um, there's a lot more known about psychology now. Um, so her focus is very much on uh, id, ego, super ego, and consciousness. Um, and then starting to look at where does that bridge in spirituality. Well, with the study of quantum physics and things, now in 2013, we've come along way Peace Pilgrim would be proud. But in her own words, what she has discovered um, is that that spiritual growing up has brought her then to her third phase of life, and I'll describe it again in her words. Um, and in this third phase of life, she calls it, great progress has taken place in this third phase of my life, but it's as though the central fi figure of the jigsaw puzzle of your life is complete and clear and unchanging, and around the edges, all the other pieces keep fitting in. There's always a growing edge, but the progress is harmonious. Doesn't that sound lovely? So that's how she felt once she obtained inner peace felt it was important to give back and then walked um, more than 25,000 miles so, uh, looking here. In 1953, um, she felt guided to begin this pilgrimage, so that's when she did it. And she did it all the way through 1981 when she um, died. So you can learn more about that story, but for the rest of today's video, I want to share with you the summary of the steps that she takes toward inner peace. And she really makes it a point to note that the steps don't have to be taken in order, that what is a first step for me might be a third step for you, that kind of thing. But I want to give you a quick synopsis of what those steps are. Um, there are four preparations, as she calls them. And the four preparations are, number one, assume a right attitude toward life. In fact, I'm not going to number them anymore because she made a very clear point they weren't to be necessarily in order. But one way is assume a right attitude toward life. Well, what does that mean? Well, stop being a victim of your life and start choosing a good attitude that makes you feel confident and powerful in the world. Um, don't be an escapist or a surface liver. Look at liver. <laughs> Look at the uh, dangerous or um, difficult things you're doing if you're abusing alcohol or overeating or gambling or addiction, um, any of those things, look at those and start to develop a right attitude toward life. So that's a pretty broad one. Next is live good beliefs. The importance of a value structure and a belief system. Um, and then she says, find your place in the life pattern. So whether that's your job or your family or your community, but that place of belonging and where you can share your gifts. Um, and then simplify the, your, your inner life to bring the outer life into harmony. Her theory is that the more simply you can 
create that inner world, the external world will then mirror that. And so those are the, um, the four preparations. And while they're preparations, they're ongoing, and she's clear about how that's ongoing. You don't wait until all that's done before you start to serve humanity, according to her. Then she talks about four purifications, and they are exactly what you might expect. Purify um, the body, the thoughts, the emotions, um, and your motives. Purify your motives. Why are you doing what you're doing? And if you um, dig deep within your heart and ask yourself why you're doing a thing and discover that it isn't heart-centered, then it's probably not bringing you as much joy as you would, would have if you were doing something heart-centered. So take a look at those motives. It might change what you're choosing to do today. Uh, and then four relinquishments. She says relinquish self-will, the feeling of separateness, attachments, and all negative feelings. Oh, that's a big tall order and the fact that she could do that was necessary in order to do all this walking she she literally only had her tunic a toothbrush a little pen and paper in her tunic she would count on the goodwill of people to um, you know feed her and provide her shelter and she made it and she did really well so I think her wisdom is worth noting because she clearly has got something going on um, and uh, you can check out her book I'll show you again Peace Pilgrim her life and her works in her own words to wrap up, I just want to share one last quote with you um, directly from Peace Pilgrim and uh, enjoy. This will be the end of the video then. If you want to teach people, young or old, you must start where they are at their level of understanding and use words they understand when you have captured their attention. Then you can take them as far as they are able to go. If you perceive that they are already beyond your level of understanding, then let them teach you. Since steps toward spiritual advancement are taken at such varied order, most of us can teach one another. Thanks for joining me today. Create a great week.